Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. Today, we're going to have fun with a bit of alternate history. What if the big event of the summer of 1588 had gone the other way for England? What if the Spanish had won? If you're new here, very special warm welcome to you. I'm your host, Heather, and I have been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009. This is the place where I put all of my episodes from various podcasts, as well as loads of extra content like this video right here. So in 1588, the world stood still as two mighty powers, England and Spain, collided in a naval battle that would reshape the course of European history. But what if the winds had shifted, the tide had turned, and the English fleet had been defeated? Today, let's explore an alternative narrative, the one where the Spanish Armada succeeded. First, let's step back a bit to truly grasp the context. England, under the Protestant Queen Elizabeth I, had become a thorn in the side of Catholic Spain. Beyond religious differences, tensions were further inflamed by the English piracy and interference in the Spanish Netherlands. Spain's King Philip II, motivated by a mix of religious fervor, political ambition, and personal indignation, amassed a fleet formidable in size and reputation. This fleet, the Spanish Armada, was entrusted with the mission of escorting an army from Flanders to invade England. The vast armada consisted of about 130 ships, which carried over 8,000 sailors and possibly as many as 19,000 soldiers. Its aim? To overthrow Queen Elizabeth I and restore Catholicism in England. England, on the other hand, while outnumbered in ships, relied heavily on superior maneuverability, innovative tactics, and the home advantage. In our known history, this was put to the test when the two forces met in the English Channel. As the ships clashed and the cannons roared, a series of English victories combined with unfavorable weather conditions ultimately led to the Armada's defeat. The winds, quite literally, were not in Spain's favor. A combination of strategic English fireships, skirmishes, and the infamous Protestant wind forced the Armada to retreat, leading many ships to be wrecked in storms off the coasts of Scotland and Ireland. The aftermath of this decisive event was clear. England emerged as the dominant naval power. Elizabeth's reign entered a golden age of exploration, arts, and prosperity. The tide of influence had shifted in Europe, with England now gaining newfound respect and asserting its dominance. However, let's consider a different twist to this tale. Let's imagine for a moment if the Spanish Armada, bolstered by a strategic advantage or simply the winds blowing a different way, emerged victorious. What would England look like under Spanish rule? What if Protestantism was suppressed and Catholicism reigned supreme? Would Shakespeare's plays carry echoes of Spanish sonnets? Would the English and Spanish crowns eventually merge? History lovers are guided by evidence and facts, but we often find ourselves pondering the infinite possibilities that lie in the questions of what if and why not, don't we? I do, don't you? It's a tantalizing, super fun exercise that Though speculative allows us to reflect on the intricate web of decisions, actions, and sheer chance that shapes the course of history. So in our exploration today, we're going to pinpoint the moment our historical timeline would diverge. So as the Spanish were regrouping off the coast on the other side of the English Channel, the English sent fire ships, and that was really the decisive factor that caused the whole fleet to have to scatter, right? So let's imagine that a key English fireship failed to ignite, or perhaps a sudden calm settles on the waters, halting the fateful push of the Protestant wind, giving the Spanish fleet the upper hand. English coastlines would have seen the shores darken with Spanish ships. Queen Elizabeth I, who had held her realm together through political guile and a will of iron, might have been captured or maybe she was forced into exile. England, with its relatively weaker land force, could have been quickly occupied. The Tudor dynasty would have faced an abrupt and ignoble end. Religion would have been at the forefront of the changes. With King Philip II's deep Catholic convictions, 
one of the first mandates might have been the swift reversion of England to Catholicism. The Protestant Reformation, which had deeply rooted itself during Henry VIII and Elizabeth I's reigns, would now face a severe backlash. Protestants seen as heretics might be persecuted or forced to practice in secret the way the Catholics currently had been, leading to an underground religious movement. London, the heart of England, might witness the construction of cathedrals and monuments that had a touch of Spanish architecture. Maybe Protestant leaders would now be in the Tower of London, making it a darker place than it already was in our known history. But history is shaped not just by battles and monarchs. It's the people, their cultures, their everyday lives that truly paint the canvas of time. And England under Spanish rule would see a fascinating blend of cultures. And this had happened before when the French invaded in 1066 and when the Viking invasions had happened and you know the Germanic invasions after Rome left. We saw this blending of cultures, so it's not something that is completely unknown. England was known for its adaptability, and you know you just look at the English language as it is right now and all of the different foreign words that mix together to make this very unique language. So we probably would have absorbed more Spanish words. The theaters, which gave birth to Shakespeare's tragedies and comedies, might now showcase plays bearing the influence of Spain's own Golden Age writers like Lope de Vega or Calderón de la Barca. The arts, a reflection of society's soul, would be transformed. English portraits, once stiff and formal under Holbein, might adopt the warm, passionate tones seen in Spanish art. In music, the lute could be accompanied by the Spanish guitarra, creating harmonies that echo both the green fields of England and the sun-baked plains of Andalusia. And let's not forget the culinary delights. English alehouses might introduce tapas alongside traditional pies. Perhaps the English afternoon tea eventually these days would see a hint of churros and chocolate. That would be amazing. As Spain's grip on England tightens, the structure of power begins to shift. The English aristocracy, once dominant, now finds itself in a precarious position. Some, seeing the writing on the wall, might seek alliances with their new Spanish overlords, while others, loyal to the Tudor legacy and Protestant faith, could form the nucleus of a nascent resistance. And that's what we saw under William the Conqueror, too. Some of the nobility said, okay, we'll go along with this. And some fought back, and then those were replaced by French people, uh, or Norman people, I should say, just to make that clear. So again, this is just kind of going off of what had happened before and what humanity is, is most likely to do, right? So England's common law system, which had been evolving since the days of King John and the Magna Carta, might now be influenced by the Spanish Leyes de la Indias. This blend could lead to a judicial system that marries the precedent-based English system with the codified regulations of the Spanish. That would be interesting. In the shadows of the halls and down the winding alleyways, whispers of rebellion might grow. Secret societies dedicated to the restoration of Elizabeth or her Protestant successor could spring to life. These underground movements fueled by a sense of nationalism and religious fervor would lay the groundwork for potential uprisings in the future. And, you know, maybe Scotland and France would unite because, of course, James would have still been in Scotland. He was the heir apparent. Perhaps France and Scotland would have united to invade from the north and Spain would have had another war on their hands up in the northern part of England with perhaps the resistance fighting there. The joining of these two naval superpowers would undoubtedly alter the course of exploration and colonization. A combined English-Spanish fleet could sail further and faster, perhaps altering the balance of power in the New World. Instead of clashing interests in places like the Caribbean, these two nations might cooperate, changing the borders of future nations in the Americas. Trade routes would be redefined. The wool and cloth exports of England could find new markets in Spanish territories, while the treasures of the Spanish main, the gold and silver, would flow not just to Sevilla, but also London. This shared wealth could usher in an era of prosperity possibly bringing about an earlier industrial revolution powered by both Spanish bullion and English ingenuity. However, Europe, a continent that is no stranger to wars and intrigue, would have had to recalibrate its strategies. 
a Spain-England union, both powerful and resource-rich, could become a magnet for coalitions. Wars might be fought, not in the fields of England or the coast of Spain, but also in far-flung territories as other European powers vie for a piece of the global pie. As ripples spread out when a stone is dropped into a pond, so would the consequences of a Spanish victory reverberate through time. The Thirty Years' War, a devastating conflict rooted in religious tensions, might see different alliances. Perhaps England under Spanish influence might not see the rise of Cromwell and the Puritans, thereby preventing the English Civil War. The Renaissance, blossoming in Italy, would reach new heights as Spanish and English patrons, flush with the combined wealth of the two empires, patronize the arts, sciences, and thinkers. We might find a world where Galileo, Newton, and Cervantes all find common patrons, and other people that we haven't heard of would have had patronage, leading to a vibrant intermingling of ideas and cultures. Yet not all the changes would be rosy. The suppressed Protestant movements could lead to large migrations, perhaps strengthening the Protestant colonies in the New World and changing the religious demographics of entire continents. Let's imagine we arrive in modern-day England shaped by centuries of Spanish influence. The skylines of London and Manchester are punctuated not just by the Gothic cathedrals, but also the intricate designs of the Spanish Baroque architecture. Imagine hearing a seamless blend of English and Spanish as you walk down the streets. Schools might teach the combined histories of the Spanish conquistadors and English explorers offering a richer tapestry of shared heritage. Cuisine would be a delightful amalgamation of the two cultures. Traditional English breakfast might come with a side of a Spanish omelet, and paella could be a regular dish at Sunday family gatherings. Imagine football having a unified league leading to matchups, regular matchups between teams like Real Madrid and Manchester United. As we journey back to our reality, we're reminded, of course, of the fragile nature of history each moment. Every decision plays a pivotal role in shaping our present. While we've indulged in a fun what-if scenario, it's essential to appreciate the true course of events that have made our world what it is today. History is more than just facts and dates. It's an ever-evolving narrative that teaches us about resilience, ambition, conflict, and harmony. In exploring alternate realities, we gain a deeper appreciation for the intricate dance of circumstances choices, and chance that crafts our shared human story. Thank you so much for joining me on this historical voyage of imagination. If you found the journey as intriguing as I did, I would love to hear your thoughts. How do you envision an alternate England? What other historical turning points pique your curiosity? Also, if you've made it to the end of this video and enjoyed it, I hope I earned your subscription to my channel and a press of that like button. I put out videos like this almost every day. And who doesn't want their YouTube algorithm tutorified? I ask you, who doesn't want that? I do. Thank you so much for watching. You are deeply loved and appreciated, and I appreciate you watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Whatever it is you're doing, you are awesome. Don't forget to drink your water, and I will see you in the next video.